ClickUp has become the everything app, designed to bring all your work, teams, communication, and collaboration into one centralized platform. And today in this updated ClickUp tutorial, I'm going to dive into all of ClickUp's important existing and new features to help you set up, streamline, and understand how to manage all your different activities under this one dynamic and easy to use work management platform. Now, just quickly, before you go ahead and launch into ClickUp, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel. Okay, so with that quick note out of the way, let's go ahead and launch into this complete ClickUp tutorial for beginners. Okay, so before we navigate through and get you up and running with ClickUp, I first want to briefly outline exactly what we will be covering today. Kicking us off, we will set up and break down your workspace, learn the structure of ClickUp, and share how you can create and manage dynamic projects, tasks, and different individual or business-related activities inside ClickUp. Following this, we will dive into standout tools and features to help you best make use of managing all the different facets in your individual day-to-day -day workflows and or business-related activities. Now to arrive on this page, simply head over to your browser and type in clickup.com or feel free to click the link in the description below this video and that's gonna take you here. Now the great thing about ClickUp for small businesses and individuals is it's completely free to use. To get started, go ahead and click on Get Started, it's free. Come down and add your personal or work email in here, depending on what you wanna use ClickUp for. For me, I wanna use ClickUp for my small business, so I'm going to add my work email in here. Then click Next, and here you just wanna add your full name and then create a password, and then get started with ClickUp. Alternatively, you can sign up with Google. For me, I'm going to quickly add my full name and password and continue. Then jump over to your email inbox, locate the confirmation code and add that in here. For me, I wanna use ClickUp for work and I run a small business of one to 10 employees and I work with everyone in my small business so I'm going to select two to 10. Here we can choose the different solutions that we wanna get started with inside ClickUp. Essentially, what activities do you want to manage inside your account? And we're gonna talk more about this later, so for now I'm just going to select Professional Services, select an option here. Here we can invite our team or external users that we wanna collaborate with on ClickUp. For now, I'm going to navigate down to I'm done, and I'll show you how to add people inside ClickUp later on. Then ClickUp is going to ask if you use any of these tools. Essentially, if you're currently using any of these tools, you can bring all your work into ClickUp. The whole idea of ClickUp, like I mentioned before, is it's an everything app meaning that you can bring and manage all your different databases, workflows, and other activities inside ClickUp. For now, let's navigate down and click on Next. And here you want to name your workspace. For us, we just want to use one workspace, and that's going to be the name of our small business called Sheetify. Most likely, if you're using ClickUp for individual use or you're a small business using ClickUp, then you most likely will only need one workspace. And that can be the name of your business or even just your name if you're using this for individual use. Come down, click on finish, and let's close out of this. Here we have a brief quick start guide. However, I'm going to close out of this because I'm going to be navigating through everything you need to know for getting started with ClickUp. Now, before we launch into our workspace, I briefly want to cover ClickUp's pricing. Like I mentioned, ClickUp has a free forever plan, and this is sufficient enough for most individuals and small businesses. The main limitation that you'll notice is the number of spaces that you can use between the free plan and the paid plans. With the free plan that we're currently on, we only have access to five spaces. And these are essentially different projects, departments, or chunks of work that you want to manage. And I'll break down and talk more about spaces shortly. Essentially, as you and your team move into paid plans, you'll notice that feature quotas are either unlimited or increase as you move up into the different paid tiers. However, like I mentioned, the free plan is more than sufficient enough for most businesses and individuals using ClickUp. Okay, so let's head back to our workspace. And you can upgrade to a paid plan at any time by simply navigating up to upgrade. Okay, so back inside our workspace, what we can do is navigate over to our workspace over here, and you can see the plan we're currently on, and if we navigate down here, we can create a new workspace. And like I mentioned, a workspace is where you can manage all your different projects. Now, the reason you might wanna have multiple workspaces is because you might have a work-based workspace. This could be for your small business, and you might wanna create a separate workspace for personal use. Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to use one workspace. Again, let's close out of this. And now what we wanna do is briefly break down ClickUp's structure hierarchy so you understand how ClickUp works when it comes to managing your different projects. 
Again, like I mentioned, we're currently inside our workspace. If we navigate down to favorites and locate spaces, your workspace is made up of spaces. For example, we have a default team space here. Let's go ahead and expand our team space and think about spaces as the different types of projects that you're working on. For example, if I was a web design agency, one space could be website projects, another space could be Google ad campaigns, or we could have a space for our CRM, customer relationship management. Okay, so we have our workspace, then within our workspace, we have spaces, then within our spaces, we have folders. And folders are used to group lists, and your lists are used to break down your projects even further. So as you can see within this space, team space, we have this folder called projects. And within this folder, we have two lists, project two and project one. If I click on project two, you can see that's gonna take us to project two. And within this list, you can see our tasks. We have task one, two, and three. Then within each of our tasks inside our lists, we have subtasks that can be added. So that is our ClickUp structure hierarchy. We have our workspace. Within our workspace, we have spaces. Within these spaces, we have folders that are used to manage our different lists. And then within our lists, we have tasks and subtasks. In addition to that, we have views, as well as filtering options and columns that we can customize. And we'll talk more about this shortly. Then if we navigate down, we can not only manage lists inside our folder, but we can also create documents for our teams to collaborate in, as well as forms for collecting data and a whiteboard. Again, a collaborative interface that you can use with your team. And again, we'll talk more about these features and tools shortly. Okay, so I wanna clean up this workspace and start from scratch. To do that, I'm going to delete this default space. Click on these three dots and then click on delete. Here we need to type in the name of this space in order to delete it then hit delete. Now let's navigate over to spaces, click on add, and let's create a new space. I'm going to call this web design projects. Then we can change the icon and color if we like. I'm happy with this, or you can upload your own. You can also add a description. Then it's best practice to make your space private and then to invite your team members if you want them to have access to this space. Here you can choose who you want to collaborate with on this space. For now, let's click on continue. Here we can define our workflow. I'm going to select project management. Then we can quickly customize defaults within this interface. We can also do it once we've created this space. I'm happy with all these default views for now. We also have task statuses. Then what we can do is simply select a status template from the list on the left-hand side, or we can click out of here and navigate over to the default statuses and customize them the way that we like. Here we have our active statuses. I can click on these three dots and rename and change this to approval required. I can also rearrange these different statuses if I like. Then come down and if you want to save this as a status template, click on save as template and apply changes. I'm happy with this space default, so I'm going to come down and click on create space. And within this space, you can see we have our first list. I'm going to click here and then click on the three dots and rename this list. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to call this client A and I'm happy with that. I want to add another list, click on list and I'm going to call this client B. So at the moment we have two web design clients, essentially two projects that we want to work on within this space. Then I'm going to quickly navigate through the process of adding a few more lists, just like I showed you now. Okay, so as you can see within this space, web design projects, I now have five clients. What I'm gonna do is navigate up to this space and click on the plus icon and then create a new folder. I'm going to call this e-commerce clients and then click on create. I'm then going to add one more folder. And remember, folders are used to manage our different lists, documents, forms, and whiteboards. This folder is going to be called service-based clients. And again, I'm going to select create. Now, for example, let's say that client A, B, and C are clients that require a e-commerce website. In that case, I'm going to simply drag each of these lists, these clients into my e-commerce clients folder. Again, client B, and client C. Now I have a default list here that has automatically been created when I created the folder. So I'm going to click here and then click on delete and then delete. I'm going to do the same with this folder here. You can see we have this default list, come down and click on delete and then delete again. Now within this folder, these two web design clients, client D and client E 
require a service-based business website. So I'm going to drag these two projects, these two clients inside this folder. And that's how I'm managing this space. So if we navigate up to this folder here, e-commerce clients, I can minimize this folder and this folder here. And that is how you want to organize your different spaces. Okay, so let's expand e-commerce clients and then move client A to the top of this folder and then click on client A. And let's add our first task for this list for this client. And as you can see, we created our first task, brand colors. I'm going to add another task and I'm happy with that. Now, what we can also do is navigate up to new and add another task from here. And then we can add other details from this interface if we like. For now, I'm going to click create task. And as you can see, we now have three tasks. I can click on each of these tasks and that's gonna bring up this interface. Here we can see the different columns that we can add inside this list. For example, dates, when is the due date? I can also select a time estimate, for example, five hours. And then we have these other column types up here. Priority is normal. We can also add tags, assign our team members and add relationships between tasks. If we navigate down here, we can create a custom field, add subtasks and create a checklist. All assigned comments will show down here and you can also upload attachments for each of your different tasks. Now we can also navigate up here and switch the layout from default to full screen and sidebar. I'm going to select sidebar and you can see that this task populates over on the right hand side as a sidebar. So again, within your lists, you have these different columns. We can also add additional columns if we like. Simply click on add column. You can choose the column fields that are currently shown by simply navigating down to hidden. For example, if I wanted to show date closed, date updated and latest comment. Okay, so I'm going to close out of this and you can see the different columns along here. Again, like I mentioned, you can either click on the task to expand the item or task details, or you can simply click on the associated field and add the data in here. If we navigate across, you can see that all these tasks are currently in the to-do status, and we're currently grouping this list by status. If I navigate down and click on this circle, I can change the status to in progress, and that's gonna populate this group that we have here, the status group that we customized at the start. Again, I can navigate down to logo design and then click on in progress as well. And then for brand colors, I'm going to select planning. And just quickly, I'm going to add one more task under the to-do status. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now to add a subtask, simply navigate over to this add subtask icon and add your subtask. This is a task that is associated to your primary task. For example, with product pages for this e-commerce client, client A, they have multiple product pages that we need to build. So the main task is product pages and a subtask could be the different pages that we need to create. Okay, so as you can see under the primary task, product pages, you can see I've added four subtasks. These are different product pages that we need to create. Now, what we can also do is create subtasks of a subtask. So we have our primary task, then a subtask, then a subtask of this subtask. The reason I might want to add this is because this client has many fishing net products. So within the product category of fishing net large, they have six fishing net pages that we need to create. Okay, so I'm actually going to cancel that and then navigate over to to do and click on in progress, as well as this product page, which let's say needs approval required because we've already completed this particular page. Now what I can do is click on the subtask and then navigate up to share. And then what I can do is share the subtask that needs approval with my client by navigating down to share link with anyone I'm going to turn that on and then click on copy public link. And you can see that this task will be shared as view only. So the client can view the subtask as well as all the details associated to the subtask. It could be details about what we've created, a link to the page that we've created, as well as other details that we want this client to approve. So let's go ahead and see what this link looks like from the perspective of a customer. And because I haven't added any additional details to this particular subtask, there is not much to see, but you get an idea of what a client could see. They can see the status, the product type details about the subtask down here, and then subtask activity over on the right hand side. Okay, so let's head back to our ClickUp account and we can customize any of these other link details if we like. Okay, so let's close this and then close this details page for this subtask. Now, before we dive into filters as well as views, let's navigate up to our workspace and then click on manage users. And here we can manage all our ClickUp users inside our account. 
Let's navigate up to invite by email and invite some of our team members. So this is the team member I want to add. What we can do is navigate over to member and we first have the option to add a member. So this person will have access to public spaces, docs and dashboards. However, if you've created spaces, docs and dashboards and you've set them as private, then these members will not be able to access those elements within your ClickUp account. You will need to directly add those members to those private accounts. Then we have guests and guests can only be invited to folders, lists and tasks. Again, these could be your particular clients or external people outside of your organization that need to access specific components of your different projects. And then we have admin. And let's say you're in a partnership, then maybe you want to add the other business owner as an admin. Okay, so for now, I'm going to add member and then click on invite. Here you can choose the spaces that you want to add that member to. I want to add this member to web design projects because this team member is a website developer. And I'm going to add one more team member and then click on invite. And again, I want to add them to this space here by clicking add to spaces. So here you can see your team members as well as external guests and internal guests. Let's navigate back over to our workspace and then navigate down to our web design project space. And you can see an overview of this particular space. If I navigate down to this first folder, let's click on client A, which is the list, the client that we've been working on. I can navigate up to assign and assign this task as well as subtasks by selecting the people that I invited to this particular space and to my account. Okay, so I'm going to quickly take some time to fill out all these details. Okay, so I've quickly gone ahead and filled out some of these different columns like assignee, priority, and the status type. Now with our different tasks and subtasks, what we can do is navigate up to filters. So at the moment we're grouping our tasks by status, which is ascending. What we can also do is click on group by and group by assignee. And you can see we have myself and then unassigned. And that's because these team members that I invited to collaborate with me on this space have not yet accepted their invite. Let's navigate back up to group, come down to assignee, and let's group by priority. You can see that now our tasks are grouped by high, normal, and low priority. Okay, so I'm going to navigate back up to group, come down, and click on status again. We can also navigate over to filters, and we can choose to filter based on the different column options over here. Again, for example, status is select and active. And we can see all our active tasks. Let's click on not started, and you can see the tasks that have not yet started. And then we have these other options, you get the idea. I'm going to select confirm and remove this. And you can also save filters if you like. We have me mode, everything connected to me. We also have assignees, and you can see the assignees over here and show closed. Now let's navigate up to view. We have these different view types. We have our primary view type, which is list. We can also navigate over to board. Again, you can change the way that you view your data across your different views by changing the grouping. At the moment, we're grouping our Kanban board by status, to do, planning, in progress, and then these other statuses across here. We can also simply drag and drop to move the different tasks to different stages, different statuses. For example, update required. Let's say we want to move that over to on hold. Now, if we navigate over to team, you can preview your team performance. However, you do need to upgrade to a paid plan in order to view this team view. Okay, let's navigate over to calendar. Again, you can simply add tasks from this calendar view if you like, as well as view the different tasks from your calendar. Then we have a Gantt. This allows us to visualize the progress and a timeline of our specific tasks. And then we have list. Now you can add additional views if you like by simply clicking add view, and you can choose the different views that you want to add. For example, let's go ahead and click on form. Again, this is only available on a paid plan, but essentially what you can do is you can collect data from users by creating a form, a custom form, and sharing that with potential website clients, for example, web design clients, and you can simply share this form or embed the form on your website to collect this data. And that's automatically going to populate that data that you collect from your forms inside your lists. Okay, so let's close this. And now let's navigate over to this plus icon and click on folder. I'm going to call this team planning and then create. Then I'm going to delete this list and click on delete. Then navigate over to this folder and click on add. And this time I'm going to add a doc. And this is a dynamic and customizable document that you can use to create anything that you like and collaborate with your team. This is similar to a Google document where you can manage data, connect different assets, create tables, brainstorm, and a lot more. For example, I'm going to call this web design ideas. 
I can add a cover if I like. I'm happy with this image here. Then what we can do is create a blank page, blank wiki, or write with AI. For example, I'm going to come down here and ask, give me a list of 10 e-commerce web design ideas. I can change the tone of voice and the creativity. I'm gonna come down and click on generate. And as you can see, ClickUp AI is going to generate that list for me. I'm going to insert this list and my team can collaborate and share ideas like this. I can click on add comment and add a comment down here. I'm going to tag Emma. I can also navigate down here and add emojis, record a screen clip, record a voice clip, attach a file, mention a task and commands. For now, I'm just going to add this comment and you can see that this document has one comment. I can also navigate down here and click on add and add any of these different options. For example, I can embed a YouTube video or I can come down and add a table. Let's see what other options we have. A button, add a title, URL, add the color and then add button. We can also hit forward slash and that's gonna generate these different options. Let's add a checklist. So there's lots you can do with a document. Now what we can also do under team planning, this is the folder that we created. I can add and then create a whiteboard. Here we can choose a template if we like or start from scratch. I just selected this template. You can see I have these different options. I can also add a task, for example, from e-commerce clients and I could connect client A and then convert to task. We have these other options. We can change the color, border color, add content and more over here. Simply use the different elements on the left hand side and create anything that you like. This is an interface that you can be creative with. Do you want to add shapes or do you want to navigate down here and connect tasks, documents, websites, all these different tools like Figma, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and more. So again, you can see I created team planning, which is a folder. And within this folder, we have a document, which is web design ideas, where my team can collaborate on ideas. And we also have a whiteboard that we added, which could be for brainstorming or anything else based on your collaborative environment and requirements. Now we can also navigate up to automations and you can create different automations. For example, let's click on statuses. And there are all these different pre-made templates that you can set up. For example, when status changes, then change assignee. When status changes, then create subtask. We also have assignees. When assignee changes, then create subtask. All these different options you can access. You can also create your own automation from scratch. For example, let's navigate over to close and then navigate over to client A, which is this list, and then click on automations. And let's navigate over to status and let's come down to when task type changes, then change assignee. You can also automate with AI. Simply type in the automation prompt and AI will generate that automation for you. So down here, when this happens on, when task, and I change this to status change from active to done, confirm, then what is the action? Change assignee to me. So basically when a active task is completed, I will be assigned to that task. I can also come down and click here and then add any of these other options if I want to add an additional action. Then once you've made your automation, come down and click on create. And as you can see, this is the one automation that we currently have active. You can manage all your automations under manage. Let's close out of this. Now what we can also do is leverage dashboards. We can click on plus view and then click on dashboard. And this is where you can manage your different dashboards associated to the data in your spaces. Here you can customize your dashboard, add a dashboard name, then you can click on each of these different cards to see details. Let's close out of that. You can also click on settings and you can choose the data source. Let's close out of that. And you can also add additional cards. And here are all the different options that you can add to your dashboard. For example, time tracking, which is only available on the unlimited and business plans. So again, this is where you can customize and view your dashboard to analyze your data across your different spaces. Now, just quickly, there's a few more things that I wanna cover before we finish up. Here you can open my tasks. These are tasks associated to you. Let's close this and then navigate over to open notepad. Here you can simply add and manage your independent notes. Simply click on create a note and add your notes. I'm going to close this and navigate over to record a clip. This is where you can create a quick recording. And this is useful in many cases, especially if you're trying to explain or communicate something across with your team. If we navigate across again, we can create a reminder Simply add your reminder in here. And then next to that, we can go ahead and quickly create a doc as well as access a quick action menu. 
If we navigate down to App Center, this is where you can integrate popular tools with your ClickUp account. Quickly access your folders and files inside Google Drive by connecting this with your ClickUp account. You can also bring ClickUp inside Slack with commands and notifications. For example, if a task was completed and you wanted someone to be notified inside Slack, you can do that with this integration. And there's many apps that you can integrate with ClickUp. So take the time to navigate through all these different apps. We can also ask AI. Again, this is a data-driven AI tool. For example, you can ask what tasks are created by me and closed, what tasks am I working on, and these other example prompts. ClickUp AI can quickly help you identify and search for anything across your account. Let's close out of this. If we navigate over to the left, we have your home. This is your home interface, a snapshot of what's happening within your account. Then you have inbox. Here you can manage your inbox and here you can engage in conversations with your team. For example, if I navigate up to new and then click on chat, we can communicate with our team directly inside ClickUp. I'm going to continue and then navigate over to docs. Here you can view all your docs dashboards and clips. Then you have access to timesheets. Essentially, ClickUp has their own built-in time tracker. However, you also have the option to connect a third-party tracker if you like. If we navigate down to spaces, we can go ahead and add a new space. We can also come down and use from templates. And remember, you can create any type of space that you can think of. With the free plan, ClickUp allows you to create up to five spaces. What do you want to manage? SEO project management, change management, legal stuff, home renovation, class assignment, student based projects, event planning, employee onboarding. There are over 50 templates that you have access to. You can also manage your CRM, sales CRM directly inside your ClickUp account. Like I mentioned, ClickUp is an all in one app and everything app that allows you to bring all your different activities into one platform. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of this and navigate back over to home. That is everything that I wanted to cover in this updated ClickUp tutorial, helping you as an individual or a small business owner get up and running with ClickUp. And there we have it guys, that is it for this complete updated ClickUp tutorial for beginners. Now if you have any questions about ClickUp, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.